hello, everybody. Um, as was mentioned, my name is Derek Parker. Uh, I'm a software engineer at CoreOS, um, obligatory company stuff we're hiring and all that goodness. Um, if you like Go and distributed systems, check us out. Um, so if you know to keep your computer unlocked during a presentation, you're doing better than I am. Um, if you know me at all, you know that I'm up here to talk about Delve. Um, so Delve, uh, for those who may not be aware of it, uh, it's a project that I've been working on for uh, quite some time um, with the help of the community and some other folks. It is a debugger specifically for the Go programming language. Um, so this talk isn't really going to be an introduction to what Go or to what Delve is and, and what it can do. Um, if if you're looking for that, please feel free to catch me walking around um, if you're unfamiliar with Delve or check it out uh, on GitHub um, and play around with it. This is going to be a little bit different. So some of you might remember last year uh, I was up here and I gave a talk on Delve, introducing it and um, giving some examples and, and, and stuff like that. So the way this is formatted is just kind of a quick uh, Delve a year, a year later. Um, so uh, I spoke at GopherCon 2015. This is GopherCon 2016. Um, so uh, I just kind of wanted to kind of come up and, and give an idea of what's changed, what's happened, um, uh, and just kind of give a, a general update, status update of the project, um, and, and hopefully in, in doing so get some more folks interested in the project. Um, uh, drum up a little bit more, or drum up more excitement about it, and, and hopefully I'll, I'll get a chance to to meet with some more people and talk to about it. Um, I've already had a, a bunch of people come up and talk to me about it, which is really really cool, um, and also a bunch of success stories using it, which is always really really great to hear. So far, nothing terrible has happened when anybody's used it. So take that as a pretty good sign. Um, so this is kind of. Uh, more or less quickly thrown together list of some of the things that have changed or um, have been implemented since I last gave the talk. Almost certainly I left some of the cooler things off the list or forgot about them. Um, uh, feel free to check the change log in the project for a bigger, uh, more complete list, but I just kind of wanted to go over a few things that may be of interest to uh, a lot of gophers. Um, so one of the big things that has happened in the past year is Windows support, which is really, really cool. And one of the, the coolest things about it um, was that it was community driven. Um, so all the entire Windows port was driven by the community. Um, and uh, I never had to install Windows once, which is pretty cool. Um, it's. Uh, it's, it's really cool to see people come together and, and, and help out projects. Um, the, other, the other thing is it, it's, it's kind of gotten more widely used. It's, it's seeing a little bit greater adoption. Um, and to that end, there's been more editor integration. Um, so Delve is integrated as a debugger in Atom, the Atom editor, um, as well as the, the standard uh, debugger for Go, programming, uh, for Go programs in Microsoft's VS Code, um, which is really, really cool. Um, again, it's, it's something that's really, really cool to see uh, these kind of integrations and, and things pop up from the community. Um, uh, aside from that, uh, folks who are using Delve on uh, uh, Apple machines on OS X um, might be interested to hear that the installation process has gotten a whole lot easier. Um, so when I first introduced Delve, there was um, you, you know, compile it, then you have to do some manual code signing stuff and a lot of other garbage that was kind of annoying and a lot of people got wrong most of the time um, filling up the issue list. Uh, so now, uh, another community driven thing, um, we have a brew install method that will take care of all of the cert generation and everything that you need to be able to run Delve on OS X properly. Uh, no hassle, no manual steps, nothing. Um, you're pretty much just good to go. Um, another minor thing is, uh, I, I don't believe that this was around when I last gave the talk, but uh, during, in, in an interactive session, you can evaluate expressions. So you can evaluate something like print 
uh, i plus v if those are integer variables or, or variables that can be added together, stuff like that. So you can evaluate expressions and do some interesting things to make it feel a little bit more interactive as opposed to just completely static. Um, there's added support for uh, evalu evaluating more variable types um, than when I had last, last presented. Um, better error messages for incorrect usage of Delve. Um, uh, so kind of leads you in the right direction. Um, other things just like implemented uh, just more standard features that weren't around uh, or that hadn't been implemented last time I gave a talk, like just being able to step into functions and, and stuff like that. When I first gave the talk, you can only like next and step instructions and, and some other kind of rudimentary stuff like that. Um, on the whole, there's been a lot of documentation improvements um, and that's just gonna hopefully continue. Uh, we've introduced another version of the API, um, which kind of just made it a little bit easier to um, have compatibility with the API and, um, and fixes some stuff with editor integration. Um, we've added a standard feature of a breakpoint to catch unrecovered panic and just miscellaneous bug fixes. Awesome. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs>